deadly uh, spread of COVID-19 through this community uh, continues. We lost, as of noon today, 15 more uh, of our neighbors. Uh, and you may have seen Council President Brenda Jones, who I talked to a little while ago, has now tested positive. Uh, she sounded good when I talked to her, and she wants everybody to know uh, that she's doing well. I talked to Chief Craig a little while ago. He's still home, and he's still fighting it. Uh, but we're to the point now where we know, um, we all know people who have been affected by this disease. Uh, our drive-through testing site is going to be a huge part of this strategy. Uh, people need to know whether they have this disease, and we're doing 500 to 600 tests a day. Uh, and uh, we got the numbers in from the first two days testing, the first 500 cases. 43% of the people we tested tested positive. Um, that's a pretty troubling number. I talked to Dr. Caldoun last night. Uh, the state's numbers overall since the start have been running about 25% positive. Uh, and so we don't know yet whether the sickest people were the first 500 who came through or whether uh, this disease has spread so far that 43% uh, of the folks being tested have it. But all of these numbers continue to go uh, in a, a more difficult direction. It is critical that every single Detroiter have access to the tests. And we continue to run the only major testing center in Michigan because I'm committed to that. I've had folks in the last couple of days tell me I can't get a prescription. And it's not just the fairgrounds. In the state of Michigan, the state will not let you have a test without a prescription. That's a state mandate. But there is no place in Michigan that's easier to get a prescription than in the city of Detroit. We now have, through uh, Director Fair's efforts, 30 doctor's offices and clinics in the city of Detroit taking new patients today. They're on our website at DetroitMI.gov. Two-thirds of them have promised to take care of everybody, regardless of insurance and regardless of ability to pay. Uh, and so if you hear somebody saying, I need a test, but I can't get a prescription, please help them. Show them the website. Uh, make a phone call to one of these physician offices, uh, and uh, I think if you have symptoms, I believe the prescriptions will be available. The other piece that we have to solve is transportation, because right now the only folks getting tested are people who have cars, and that's the way we had to start it. And so I have a huge team working on this, and I expect by tomorrow that we will have transportation for any Detroiter that gets a prescription and does not have a car, we are going to arrange transportation to the testing site so that you can get tested. Uh, we'll be announcing the details on that at 3 o'clock tomorrow. You'll be able to make appointments on Saturday and start getting rides to the testing sites uh, by Monday. But I am not going to stop until everyone in this city who needs a test can get a test. Um, as far as our first responders. We had very good news at the Detroit Police Department yesterday. Only 13 officers newly quarantined far and away, the lowest number we've had uh, in more than two weeks. Dr. Dunn's program that he put in a week ago uh, with the Detroit Police Department, with the temperatures and the like, I believe have turned the corner. So the numbers for the day overall in the city are this. We have 106 employees of the Detroit Police Department who have tested positive for COVID-19. 106 Detroit Police Department employees, 24 Detroit Fire Department employees, and eight DDOT employees have tested positive. From quarantine, we have now 524 police officers on quarantine, another 123 civilians, but again with Dr. Dunn's assistance, I'm very pleased with the fact 141 officers have returned to work and 98 more are in process. We've got the kind of rigorous medical care that we should have so that those who are sick are getting good treatment and those uh, who are healthy are coming back to work. Uh, we've got 126 employees of the Detroit Fire Department currently quarantined and 133 employees of DDOT currently quarantined. 
Uh, that is going to start to change dramatically uh, when we start using the five Abbott lab machines uh, this evening. And we'll be running them tomorrow and through the weekend. They will get results in 15 minutes. If these five Abbott lab machines work as uh, uh, promised, and we're going to be the first ones to find out, we could potentially return large numbers of employees who are quarantined back to work because they're healthy, and those who are tested positive, we will make sure they get the right care. This is the game changer we have been waiting for. Uh, too many times uh, our officers, our firefighters, our bus drivers get tested and are waiting five days, seven days, eight days for return. You don't know where you stand and, and you don't know if you're infecting people or if you're quarantined unnecessarily. Uh, this is going to be a great thing and I know Dr. Dunn in particular who has been working 18 hours a day to get our first responders back to work uh, is looking forward to that. Of the 15 people we lost in the last day or so, three of them hit really close to home. A Detroit Police Department chaplain, Valerie Parks, a five-year veteran of the Detroit Police Department in the 8th Precinct. She's known to everybody as somebody who would hug you when you were down. A terrible loss to this community. One of our building and safety inspectors, Jeremiah Brooks, a three-year employee, person with a heart of gold. He would take on any assignment nights and weekends to get an inspection so businesses could get open. He never turned down an assignment. Uh, and it was a terrible loss to lose Mr. Brooks. And then uh, one that I think should touch everybody in the city of Detroit, should touch everybody in the country. Jason Hargrove, a uh, bus driver, who knew the risks, was vocal about the risks, went to work anyway. On March 17th, the DDOT drivers stopped working because they didn't feel uh, that enough was being done to protect their health. I dropped uh, the rest of my schedule and I spent the day with them both uh, at the Shoemaker and the Gilbert um, terminals with those drivers. Uh, and they told me stories of passengers getting on the bus and coughing and sneezing as they were uh, putting money in the fare box as well as other issues. And as a result of that, I ordered the front doors closed I ordered that we stop collecting fares and that people board and deboard in the back to protect our drivers. I know a number of other cities have not done that. They said they couldn't uh, afford to, to lose the revenue. I just didn't think we should be putting our drivers uh, at risk. But if you haven't seen Jason Hargrove's post on social media and Facebook, Everybody in Detroit and everybody in America should watch it uh, because he was infected before we closed the front doors. And he tells the story of a passenger getting on the bus and coughing on him. And some of his language is graphic, but I don't know how you can watch it and not tear up. He knew his life was being put in jeopardy, even though he was going to work for the citizens of Detroit every day, by somebody who just didn't care, somebody who didn't take this uh, seriously. Uh, and now he's gone. And every time I see images of a group of people still clustering in this city or this country, I think about the Jason Hargroves on the buses, I think about the cops, I think about the nurses and the doctors in the hospitals who are going to work for you every single day and for you not to honor the social distancing request you're putting really good people like Jason Hargrove's lives on the line I hope the people of the city and the people of this country will watch his video and listen to his words uh, because it's the message this country needs to hear um, Dr. Dunn I thought was the hardest working man in Detroit. Uh, he started off as the medical director for the Detroit Fire Department and when COVID-19 started to spread through the Detroit Police Department, 
Uh, I said, went to him and said, how about you take the police too? And 10 days or so ago, uh, we put in new implementations at the police departments. Our officers are wearing masks in the precincts. We've got distancing. We're following really good protocols when you are off sick we are calling and checking on your symptoms every day if we don't reach you for two days we go out to your house to see what's going on uh, and um, and we've added uh, other initiatives today dr dunn is now the medical director for ddot and we already started last week with a number of these measures to protect our bus drivers we are going to ramp them up uh, with every bit of vigor we are now going to put systems in place that when bus drivers show up for work, we're going to take your temperature before you come in the door. If your temperature is too high, we're sending you home. If you're sick, we're going to make sure you're at the right doctor. We're going to make sure we're checking on you every day. And the hotel option uh, that the Greek Town Casino has been so gracious to provide for police officers and firefighters who are going home to family members who are elderly or, or have medical issues and they're afraid to take the disease home. Uh, as of today, we are extending the hotel services to our DDOT drivers. If you've got somebody in your household uh, that is vulnerable um, because of health reasons or a newborn baby or the like, uh, we are going to have hotel rooms available for our DDOT drivers, just like our cops and firefighters, to be able to stay uh, so you don't bring it home to your family. Uh, and with that, I, I can never express the gratitude I have for Dr. Dunn, uh, but he has stepped up now and is going to provide the same kind of great support to DDOT. And Dr. Dunn is going to lay out a six-point plan uh, to protect uh, all the employees in that department. Hey, 光说有什么用呢？填好二零二零年的人口普查，就可以协助公共资金的分配，比如地方医疗，更多的政府席位。想要给自己发声啊，赶紧上网填，打电话也行。请上二零二零 census.gov完成普查。